Hello, everyone. My name is Andrei Sitnik. Uh, I'm from Russia, St. Petersburg. Uh, I'm lead for time developer in Evil Martians team, but I think you know me for differences for, uh, as creator of after prefix here, post CSS, and browser list. Uh, this is my Twitter, and I will post these slides and all things, uh, all links uh, to this Twitter. Subscribe. But today is a reactive conf, not CSS conf. So definitely, I will not speak about post CSS, yes? Because today, I will present a completely different project, completely relevant to a CSS world. But I will start from a different angle. Uh, this is my family. They live in, in uh, China. And you know, it's very important to visit your family, to eat uh, your mother's borscht soup. And I would really like to do it. But unfortunately, there is a one and big problem. It's Chinese internet. When you will open a legal website, which is not blocked by Chinese government, legal, normal website, from Western internet, half of the packages will be lost. Because this is some sort of local company support. Uh, and like, how your site will work in this situation? How my site will work in this situation? Of course, most of websites, they always have infinite loaders. And like, it's very hard to use a website. But of course, the good question, um, should we care about China because it's like second world? Fortunately, it's not a problem of some different countries. Unfortunately, we have the same problems here on like in big city that are important for us. For example, in New York train in the metro, uh, they don't have uh, Wi-Fi and they have a very unstable mobile connection. Or for example, on dot conferences in, in Paris, they have a, one of the best venues in the world and unfortunately, in this venue, they don't have a Wi-Fi, and mobile signal is extremely unstable. So there is a good rule. Any wireless connection is unstable. This is like by definition. It's how wireless works. And this is the reason why we should care about offline. Not because of some client who want to go hiking can have our website. It's a rare situation. Unfortunately, every day in our like big technology city, we have uh, one or two minutes offline because wireless is unstable. And this is why we should take care about offline. But unfortunately, we don't care. The reason, like including me, of course. The reason is because we're creating a website for this type of connections. And the real connection is completely different. Thank you for Nikita for these slides. Uh, and in this uh, inconsistent connection, we have um, like a for my experience, it's, it is three uh, biggest problems. First problem, it is infinite loader when you have an uh, error during the AJAC requests. Uh, this is why a lot of users, they know if they have some problem with website, just press reload page button. Is it like a stable ecosystem for website if every user knows that he, uh, he or she must press reload button, like on any problems? Or like several second problem. When I press a save and connection is unstable, I must wait until a jack request will be finished. But like I want to continue my work. I don't need to spend a time in waiting. And unfortunately, we wait for like the uh, end of the loader just because some like one percent or even lower uh, requests have uh, failed. Unfortunately, most of the requests are successful. We don't really need to wait a loader. Or, for example, third problem. Um, for example, we have uh, two users. They both open a web page, like form, on the same time. They have a same state. Then one user changes in one field, other change a second field. They then both press a save. But because we, we send the full state to the server, one client will override all edits of the other. This like in every site. I have it on my site. I think you have it on your site. Because we, we don't think about it. But unfortunately, right now, in any website, you have at least two users. Because every user has not only a laptop, but also a mobile device. This is the reality. But I dream about a better world. Every time that I'm going to sleep, I imagine a better world with, when everything is fine. I imagine a world when every regular application, not a special web chat, just any application with forms, will have a real-time update. When you don't need to reload a page to see uh, update, updates, when updates will come to your computer. Or when uh, 
our web application save our changes in the background, not bothering our with our loaders. And when we have a full offline support, it, and not with like caching data, but with allow us to edit the data. For example, like I'm in New York Metro and I got a message from my grandmother, are you alive? And I want to write a message and forgot about it. But unfortunately, current application is telling me that it is impossible. And yeah, all these things I want with a less code and with current ecosystem. You know, it's impossible to go to your DevOps team and say that, guys, I, have, I found a very nice database with version 0.1.5. Let's replace our Postgres to this shiny library. So yeah, this, this dream is like a big dream. I'll be, I'll be honest, there is no solution for this dream right now. Maybe we will create in the next years, maybe it will, uh, the solution will not be created by me, but I think this is a thing that we all want, a better internet um, application. So how we can deal with it? I think the real problem is a jack request. A jack request is very easy in the beginning, but when you like, make it more complex and complex, it becomes hell to write it. So we need to kill a JAK request. Solution is simple. Um, and this JAK request, they have a um, different problem for our minds. Like when we create a web application, we don't care about uh, servers or different stuff. We just send a request and you know, I don't care about the server. And there is a much better approach to think about computer system. It's called distributor systems or distributing programming. It means that every component of your web application, like client side, server side, or other client side, they are part of the biggest system. And you're creating this big system, not a separated component. This is the idea. And there is a lot of technology around it. And of course, it's like a very old idea. But it's not so easy to implement it. And you know, we're all going to uh, JavaScript because we, we saw that it was easy. We will just make our own click uh, listeners. And we, we it's not expected that we'll have all this science problems right now. So we need, some, we need to make distributed system easier. And there is a way to make something more easier. It's called frameworks. Do you remember how difficult it was to make a single page application in the past before the React? Or like backend before the Ruby on Rails? It was really hell. It was really complex things. But right now, it's not a problem because of the frameworks. So we need a framework to distributed system. But uh, what is framework? I think that framework is the idea. It is not a code. It is not a code written on GitHub. Uh, React is not the code on the Facebook slash React. React is the idea. Ruby on Rails is uh, getting real. If you accept this idea, you will write the same code on any language, on like any name. So we need an idea to make a framework for distributed system. And we found one. We created this idea in St. Petersburg, the best bars city in the Russia, and in my experience in the world. We have discussion with uh, Dan Abramov after a meetup with a lot of alcohol, and we spoke about a very interesting problem. Like, imagine if you have uh, two clients, and they both send the uh, same document, but with different states, like different states of one document. And then you must to merge it. And like, write a code to merge these two conflicts is very hard, because, especially when you don't understand Chinese. But if we have uh, some problem with algorithm, we should change a data structure. Data structure is the first thing, algorithm is the second. So what if we will change a data structure? What we will not think in the states, but we will think in the term of actions, what was changed exactly. So uh, these first two actions is an initial state that was sent from the server. So one client had action to removing one like, and other client had action to change the name. Merging this, to conf this conflict is very easy. We just need to put this array to one array and sort it by the time. It's this idea called event sourcing. It's old idea. And on top of this idea, uh, we have a very nice uh, scientific research, scientific paper. It's called CRDT. It is conflict-free uh, replica data types. It's a data types with a lot of limits. Uh, and if you agree with these limits, you will not have a conflict, of course, in terms of these limits. 
And the best implementation of CRDT is WormJS, created by mad Russian scientist Viktor Grishenko. You already saw it on the stage this morning. Uh, so we talk how we can uh, connect a Redux with a SwarmJS, and it was a problem. It was a problem because every component has a own list of the actions. We have a list of the actions in SwarmJS. We have a list of the actions in Redux. We have a list of mutations in GraphQL. Everyone has the same list of the actions, but they are separated, and connection between them is very hard. And so this is the idea of Lagax. What? One second. Ah. Ah. What if we will have a single lock for every component? What if we will have a single lock for CRDT? What if we have a same lock for Redux and same lock for synchronization with the servers? This is idea beside Lagax framework. So how it works? We have a list of the action on the client, of course, like same as we have in Redux, same action as Redux. Everything is same like right now you have on your websites. Then, we have a same list of the action on the server. And then we need do, to do only one thing. We need to synchronize this list of the actions. We need to open WebSocket, and when client will add a new action, we will send it to a server by WebSockets. If we don't have a connection for some time, on the next connection, server will say a number of the last action that it received. And so it's very easy to send uh, updates. And we don't have a problem with duplication. It's, like, it's a very easy way to synchronize the data in the time order it logs. Also, server could create action and send it to a client too. So this, it's a both way direction. And also, other client could create action, send it to the server, and then we will send it to our client. So we have left updates for free just because we have this idea of actions. Synchronization actions. And same with browser tabs. We don't need a connection to synchronize state between browser tabs. Let's think in terms of, uh, in term, uh, in terms of uh, a distributed system. It's a two clients that synchronize the state between each other. So idea of Lagax is to put action inside a log and forget about it. Don't think who, when, and how we'll synchronize it. It's like problem of Lagax. Everything will be dealt with Lagax. You just need to put the action to the log and like, think about it and forget about it. So for example, right now, we, have, we create an action to rename our project, send it to a server, and we must show a loader until it will be returned. And only then we can change the name. In Lagax approach, it means that you put it to the log and forgot about it. So you put action to the log and update interface immediately. Of course, uh, and of course, we will have a, some. In Lagax, we have a special library to show a current synchronization state. So user will see all of this, like how a synchronization works. But it is not problem for you. It's a problem for Lagax. Lagax will take care about it. If, but of course, if we will send something to a server, update the state, but then server have uh, some problem, what we will do? In this case, in Lagax, server at any time could send an undo action and undo any action on the client. So if this project rename was wrong, and we update the in interface, then we have a problem on the server. Server sent undo, and we update name to the old version. So yeah, this is the idea of Lagax. But you know, idea is very easy when you speak about it. And it's much more complex when you start to implement it. <laughs> so first problem. Uh, we have, like, uh, the core idea of any event sourcing system is the same order. If you have a different order of same action on different machine, it's more easy just to run away from your work and forget anything. It's very hard to fix this problem. So we need to be sure about the order. Of course, first idea, let's have uh, some time property and sort by this time. But you know, time is not so easy in distributed system. For example, Two times created in like, if you create one time, then create second time, it could be equal. So we can sort by this time, because like we need unique uh, time to sort it properly. Or like different idea. Time created after first time could be lower than like previous time. It happens because we have a time synchronization process in our operation systems. In any moment, it could run and change a time. Also, a good example of this problem is leap, uh, Leap second. It's a special extra second in the end of the year. So you will have a time to finish all your 
work on your tasks that you have no time on this year. Special second, special for you. Not in any year, in some of the years. Or sometimes client and the server could have a uh, time difference more than one hour. I'm not talking about the time zones, because timestamp is a time zone free type. It happens because some client go into another city, and they don't understand the idea of the time zones. And in the new place, they don't change a time zone, they change the actual time. It happens. And so it's, we, we should take care about it. There is a solution called vector clock. But unfortunately, vector clock is not really fit my tasks, because vector clock is not work very great in offline, when offline have a long period. So this is why we created a different timer. It used timestamp, it used unique node ID and special sequence number that increase every time we have a same time with the same timestamp. And server sent a current time to a client. Client calculate a difference between server and uh, its time and add this difference to any actions. So any action in server and client log is in the current machine time. So yeah, Lagax time is nice, use it. Second problem. Second problem, uh, so of course we have a one storage to save actions, because like it's offline, it should work in offline. But if you will open a br uh, website in two different browser tabs, and then these two browser tabs will keep, keep a two WebSocket connections, and action will send the same action to these browser tabs, one browser tab will save it to database, and second will send that it is a duplicate. The main problem of this problem is that I found it I just in a few weeks before the first rep, uh, introduction of Lagax. It was like a disaster for me. Like, you create a sense and found that it doesn't work. But sometimes you can put your problems into your benefits. So we found a very nice solution. Browser tabs elect a leader, and only a leader keep a WebSocket connection. Other tabs, follower tabs, will have a new action from the leader tab. So finally, we will have a same notification count in any browser tabs. So it was an um, idea, like, but let's show the code, how it actually looks like. Because like, I can talk about infinite, but how it actually looks like. So Lagax is a client-side library, only 12 kilobytes, sense for size limit. It's Redux-compatible API. You need only to replace one line with a few lines, and then you will have a same dispatch method, and you can continue to use it without any problem. But in addition, you will have a two special dispatch methods. So first method, we create action visible in every browser tab. So you will have a cross-tab synchronization for free. Second, a third method will send this action to the server. So instead of the thinking about uh, making a jug, think about loaders, all that stuff, you need only to make a uh, call a dispatch with a special sync method, sync method, and that's all. Unfortunately, it's not only a client side. You must have a Lagax server. Right now, it's not just framework, but protocol is open. You can implement it. So in, in the server, you have a handler for every uh, actions. In this handler, you, of course, check uh, action, um, access for this user. And you have a callback. In this callback, you can do anything that you want. You can use any database that you want. You can use PostgreSQL, MySQL, or something, I don't know, file-based file systems. Uh, and if you have a legacy web, uh, web service, it doesn't mean that you need to replace it to a Lagax server. You can make a Lagax server in some sort of proxy. It will get uh, actions from the Lagax client and send it to your old Backend by like HTTP, it's not a problem. In any moment, client could create action and send this action to the server, and oh, and send this action to a client, and client will see the new actions. And in any moment, client could undo any action on a client. How subscription work? How we create a data uh, in Lagax? We don't think in terms of requests. We it's created for a subscription. Subscription in first class citizen. So you have a special decorator. You wrap your React components into this decorator. And when this React components will be rendered, it will call a subscribe method. So, like, same with GraphQL, but with subscription by default, not with requests. And on the server, you check access for the user. And then 
you can put any uh, states to a log for the client, and client will receive the in the initial state of the uh, of this resource of this user of something. So I talk a lot about the benefits of Lagax. Let's talk about the problem of Lagax. <laughs> so first problem, it's not CRDT, it's not a database. It's a framework to make both of them, to make a database and to make CRDT. Second problem, it's a log cleaning. I talk about how easy it to add something to the log. But to remove something from the lock, it's not so easy. You have a special API. It's not like rocket science, but you need to think about it. So third problem, second problem, is complexity. Our informational technologies is not about using a fancy technologies. It's not about to put in React in any way. We are programmers to make a thing simpler. This is the idea of programming, simplicity. And if you have a simple website, don't use Lagax. Because Lagax is like framework, you need to think about it. And also you need to think about a cleaning. So if you have a simple website, complexity will grow, and it's not what we want. But if you have a more complex web application, I think you know about it because you feel everyday pain and nightmares about networking. In this sense, you will understand that Lagax is a great idea for you, and it, it will reduce a complexity because you can forget about a jack request and all the hell with requests. And third problem, it is a young project, 0.2 with something. Yeah, it's about only a year, so it, you can sell alcohol to them, to this project. Uh, but we use it in our production, uh, because we have a very brave managers. Technically, they don't have a choice. <laughs> and it's not a one-person project. We have a more than 30 contributors sent to them. And like, if you want to make a great open source, come to us, make a crazy stuff. <laughs> So, result, Lagax is a framework to replace a jack request and RESTful on the server. It replaces it with the idea of log synchronization. You put your action, Redux action, to the log and forget how and when it will be synchronized. It will be a problem of Lagax. Where to use Lagax? Not in the web chats, not only in web chats. I created it for a simple web application, like with, app, with any application with a lot of forms. And third, why you should use it? First, you don't need a Redux saga anymore. You don't need to all the crazy stuff to make a jack request. It is a simple Redux. You just put action and forget about it. Then you will, your interface will be faster because optimistic UI. You user press a save button and it's immediately closed and saved. Of course, you will have live updates and offline first out like out of box or in, with some extra moves, but it, it's very easy and it's ready for current ecosystem. So it's Redux API, same that you have, and the, any database on the server. That's all. This is a Twitter of Lagax. This is my Twitter. That's all. <laughs> da -da -da. Everybody's on time today. Great. So uh, let's go through the 30 questions if possible. Yep. So let's read through them. Yeah. Of course. Can Lagax? Oh, yeah. Like, um, if you have a friend who don't use Redux, like on this conference, <laughs> or for example, a friend who don't use even React, you have a Lagax client in slow level library, and you can use it in any type of framework. You can use it with Vue.js, you can use it with jQuery, with anything. So, yeah, it's not a problem. So. Let's separate the job. I read, you answer. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. So why not treat separate tabs as separate machines? Why letter election? Leader election? Why not treat separate tabs? Oh, yeah. Um, first problem, if you have indexed database, it will be a global for any browser tabs. Of course, we can create an uh, indexed database, database for every browser tab, but like it will reduce uh, data on your machine. It will, reduce, it will use more memory. It, like, I think it's not a good way. And also, like keeping a one connection have a lot of benefits. For example, you will have a, a less load on your servers. Okay. Is it possible to have custom API error handling? Do not do undo instead try again? Uh, yep, it's possible. Like uh, you have a you have a callback. So you can do anything that you want in callback. So you can you can make a catch method and do anything in the catch method that you want. Yeah. So. Uh, 
the next one is, should we expect logos abstracted from Redux? Is it, I wonder if it's possible to integrate with something like Cerebro. I think I also use Legux client. It's like abstracted from the, from the Redux. You can use it with use Legux uh, client doesn't have a Redux inside. You can use any state, states API that you want. OK. Uh, let's do two more. Uh, how does WebSocket perform under poor network connection? Uh, the, uh, we test Legux uh, WebSockets in the China. I think it's a good test. Um, the main problem with WebSockets, and many pe people hear about it, is not a uh, poor connection. The main problem is uh, firewalls. And firewalls that, like, oh, I see unknown traffic. I will, just cut, uh, I will just cut it, because I don't know what is it. And there is a good solution. Use secure WebSocket. If your WebSocket will be encrypted with TSL, like VSS protocol, in this case, it should be equal to uh, like keep alive HTTP uh, connections. So firewalls will not see a difference and will, like, will not cut your connection. OK. And let's do one more. Do you think about, what do you think about snapshots? Did you think about snapshots in order to clean events over time, or we need to store all events? Yep, it has a snapshot. We have a snapshot about 100 actions. Of course, because like, without the snapshots, any undo action will be like, extremely long. Okay. And on this positive note, thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs> Appreciate it.